What is regression analysis? In broad terms, regression analysis is a process for estimating the relationships between a dependent variable, in our case the label or the outcome, and one or more independent variables, in this case the input data or the features. Regression analysis happens to be a great approach to finding the formula for linear decision boundaries. Linear decision boundaries emerge for binary classification problems. In binary classification, the values taken by the outcome or the Y label are exactly two possibilities. To illustrate this, let us go back to our most basic classification problem from the previous video, which was the new housing market of Rockville. This problem had a linear decision boundary separating sold from not sold houses within a year from their build. In this situation, we can give a value of zero to any house that has left the market and consequently got sold, and we can give a value of 1 to any house that still has a standing offer in the market and thus is yet to be sold. This way, the label Y is filled with values of 0 and 1 for every corresponding set of input features X1 and X2. As a reminder, we can compute the dimensions of the decision boundary such as d equals n minus 1, with n being the number of input features, such as the location of the house, its price, and so on. In the case of our house and market example, d equals 1, which means that the decision boundary is expressed with the formula of a line. The following equation, w1x1 plus w2x2 plus b equals 0, represent the straight line for the decision boundary. This equation tells us that any data point below this line belongs to a house that is likely to be sold within a year. At the same time, any data point above this line belongs to a house that is not likely to be sold within a year. We can get a fairly good estimate of the values of W1, W2, and B using the two points method to compute the equation of a line. In later videos, we will show in great details how to build the algorithm that spits these values automatically. But for the sake of progressing in our current case, let us assume these values are known. Based on the separation of the two data classes given to us by the linear equation of the decision boundary, we can make future predictions on similar datasets. As we have seen in the previous video, you may remember that y hat is the prediction that we need to get from the classification problem. It needs to match the Y label that is known from observations and knowledge experience. To make predictions for the housing market example, we can write two conditions. The first condition states that W1x1 plus W2x2 plus B is smaller or equal to zero and corresponds to houses likely to be sold. This means the prediction y hat must have a value equal 0. At the same time, the condition w1x1 plus w2x2 plus b is strictly bigger than 0 corresponds to houses not likely to be sold. This means the y hat prediction must have a value equals 1. The question we need to ask at this stage is, how do we go from the equation of a line to predicting y-hat values that are either 0 or 1? 
In other words, we need a mathematical function that takes the equation of a line as input and then outputs a single value that is either 0 or 1 depending on the sign of the input. In this case, we can write the white hat formula as a combination of the linear equation and a function called g. The function g needs to ensure that no matter the values given by the linear equation, the outcome is always 0 or 1, and is only dependent on whether the input value is positive or negative. In this kind of situations, the function g is represented by a so-called step function. As shown by this graph, any values of the input x will result in g taking either 0 or 1. Furthermore, positive values of the input will result in g taking the value 1, while negative values of the input will result in g taking the value of 0. For binary classification problems with three input features, x1, x2, and x3, the decision boundary that separates the two classes of data in this case is a 2D plane. In the case of a 3D binary classification problem, we need to consider the equation of a 2D plane w1x1 plus w2x2 plus w3x3 plus b equals 0. In this case, the y hat formula is obtained by applying the step function to the linear equation of the 2D plane. Still, the y hat prediction takes the values of either 0 or 1 depending on the sign of the input equation. We can now generalize for a number n of input features. In this case, a binary classification problem will have a decision boundary that is given by the equation of a hyperplane. This hyperplane has a dimension n minus 1. The y hat predictions are obtained by composing the equation of this hyperplane with the step function to get the values of 0 or 1 depending on the sign of the input equation. Throughout this series, we will adopt the same naming conventions you are likely to see in the literature of deep learning. W1, W2, and so on up to Wn are called the weights. They define the contribution strength for each input term, such as weak, strong, or null. B is known as a bias. In the case of a linear equation, the bias is the intercept of the line. But more on the reason of this naming in later videos. The function g is known as the activation function. While we have shown that g takes the form of a step function, in reality, the activation function comes in many forms and shapes, depending on the nature of the classification problem we are dealing with. In broad terms, the role of an activation function is to transform the values from the decision boundary formula into a series of probabilistic values. These values were 0 on 1 in the case of binary classification, but they can be a longer series of probabilistic values for non-binary classification problems, which we will cover in the next video.